to go to and you start doing it and you're not going to be thinking about well i'm just going to do it on the weekends when you're drunk you're not going to be thinking about that you know in the long run you're not going to be thinking about that either you just got to be like well i'm gonna get drunk well i'm gonna stop next weekend then the next week it comes up like no i'll stop the next weekend you know you just but everybody keep going else on. is doing it too i mean you're going through a whole classroom of people doing it so what's the what's the big deal i think that the important thing is not to start it off not to taste the fun not to get into the glamour because that way you know you'll still have your objectives and you'll still have your goals in your mind and you'll know what you're striving for and then you know after you know after you you know after you have everything done you'll have the the last laugh as they say everybody here believes that when they come to a college setting or when they come and there are going to be older boys and girls men and women by that time that we're all just going to look there and say alas my grade point average may suffer so i shan't have a drink is this does that sound does that sound real to anybody here I mean, Derek, I put you on the spot to, to, to say something like this, but I'm wondering how real this sounds to people. You're just going to say, no, no. No, because I've been up to UMass before because my sister attends the University of Massachusetts, and um, I mean, they do party and they have a lot of fun. They drink and stuff, but really it's just going up there. It's just responsibility. That's why you get accepted to a college like that. And like to other colleges mm -hmm. around the nation, it's just you have to have your own willpower and your own responsibility. I'm not like, if you're going to drink, just drink on your own time and stuff. It's like a whole peer pressure thing yeah, it's totally is to drink. Wherever you go, not just yeah, I know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. Wherever you go, well, with any major college you go to, there is a thing. There's soror there's cl there's sorority clubs. There's there's things that they get into just so they can get involved with other things and they drink. I mean, what are you going to, I mean, going to college, yeah, that's great. All right, I got my goal straight, blah, 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 blah. What about your free time? What are you gonna do? No. You read the book? I mean, you gotta. I think some some point, some stopping point, uh, inside um, a person that says, "No, this isn't what I want, and this yeah, is too far." You walk through the door, right? And your mother smells, your mother father smells alcohol on your breath, and they jack you up against the wall and say, "Never again to UMass," and the alcohol is on your breath. How are you going to react to somebody who's just trying to help you out? Well, I'm going to resent them, probably. Okay. Most definitely. Um, right, definitely. If, if they start saying where I can go and where I can't go. But what if your parents know better and know that what you're doing right now, which is what we've all been talking about, that what you're doing right now is starting to lead yourself onto a very dangerous path? They have to look at the reasons why I'm doing it, I think. And not just, I think you have to not take care of the symptoms, but take care of the reasons what are the reasons and the causes. Why you're doing it? Well, this is, I'm talking, uh, okay. okay, hypothetically, whatever. Um, <laughs> no, I really am. Cause I haven't, I haven't. Um, let's, okay, let's pretend. All um, right. I think the, the reasons I'd be doing it would be that um, I think that I can't have fun any other way, maybe, or, or that, uh, that I think that uh, people are going to like me more this way and that I, I'm not, I don't have enough self-esteem to say no and still think that I'm a uh, person that's worthy of being with or something. Escaping pressure, pressure of school work. You could be, you can be escaping like a lot of people drink and a lot of people drug to, to, to escape problems. If you fail the test, or fail the major exam, okay, that's it. I'm gonna go drink. I'm just gonna go all out. I have, you know, your self-esteem went from here to here. What about know? just developing a whole persona of being a drug person or a drinker? That it's like nobody bother me. I'm drinking. I'm a, I'm a druggie. I mean, that's what we used to call them in my day. I'm a druggie. So you get, sort of get the pressure off you and you get, a, you get a, a reputation. You don't have to belong to any kind of a club, or maybe that is a club, but maybe that takes some of the pressure off of you by saying, I'm going to drink. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do dope. I'm a doper, so I don't have to do well in school. Why should I do well in school? I'm a doper. It's accepting um, what people... If, if, if you, it's easier to accept insults than compliments. So you walk around, people say, hey, you're a doper, you're a druggie. It's right. I'm a druggie. I live with it. I don't have to live up to anybody's expectations. Well, I have to, because their expectations mm -hmm. of me is to go around taking drugs. That's what they want of me. That's what they see me as. That's what I'm going to do. Easier? They a way out? A way, to, a way to belong? What's your label? It's easy to carry on with it. Especially as an addict or using drugs. It's like, in school, there's a clique. Was there the jocks, the preps, and the junk, the, the, the druggies, as they call it. Well, that's what I was told here yeah. at Central High. I Definitely. was told there's, that I said, well, can we get some school. people here that, that have a drug experience? And the answer was, nah. They're the druggies, and they don't do this kind of a forum well so then what do we do to reach them i mean we've got a group of really terrific kids here right so i mean what do we do what do we do to reach priscilla 
It's like there's always going to be those type of people that are going to use an experiment and mm -hmm. get caught up in it. Um, and no matter what you try to tell them, it's not going to help because they're going to do it anyway. I know for me, no matter what someone tried to tell me, I was going to do it anyway. You know, what it took for me is to go through the pains I went through. Okay, and but then what, Derek, was... what Derek said, did that make any alarm bells go up in your head? Does that alarm you at all? Does it frighten you at all? Does, is he... I mean, unfortunately, you had the bad sense to be that honest with us, but I don't mean just to yeah. pick him out, but I'm saying, I mean, is he telling you something that, uh, that makes you a little bit worried? Or is it okay that maybe we can let our kids drink a little bit or party a little bit or smoke a little bit? No, I'm not no? saying go out and drink or use or whatever, right? you know? But I think education is the most important, like these, this peer ed. That's real important to reach out to a lot of young kids right. and like let them know what it's about. No one now, did that when you, I was a kid. What were you all reacting yeah, to yeah. here? He'll take a mile. Give him an inch and he'll take a mile and that's mm -hmm. what's just gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Don't let it start, you know. Just I mean, you can't always prevent everything, but just I mean, don't act like it's okay. I mean, just let them go on doing them and then all of a sudden say stop. Don't let them start. Yeah. How? If you let them start, that's just like saying it's okay to do it. How? How do I stop you? Yeah, how do you stop? Yeah, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easier said than done. Okay, we have somebody here who is a, is a exactly. DARE officer. Excuse me, gentlemen. Joe, can Otto from the Holyoke School System. Yes, Joe. 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 Yes, Joe.
Well, um, you know, she has a lot of people to talk to, speech therapists, uh, occupational therapists, you know, and the nursing staff. And Diane, she, I don't know, she just voiced that she wanted to do something and make a difference. And this was her idea, you know, to reach out to people, to show them, you know, what happened to her and that it can happen to you. Okay, and we heard some of Diane's words where she said that they gave her a negative prognosis and she kicked him right back and said, no way. That's what they say, but life goes on and I am strong and I'm going to fight back. And Diane, we believe that you're going to fight back and we are very grateful that you brought your story to us and very glad that you could be with us. And you should know we're also a little bit frustrated because we wish we could just reach right in there and talk to you, but we can see you and know that this has made a difference. So thank you very much. And we appreciate your being here and thank you too, Bonnie. You're welcome. Okay, now we can get back to some very lively discussion. It's very touching to see her. I'm very moved every time I see her and I'm very moved by the strength of somebody that despite her own pain, takes the time to try to put it down on a piece of paper and reach other people. And I find this a very emotional experience. I also think that what Joe Canada was saying was obviously a very emotional experience for everybody because I heard a large chorus of people responding to what you were saying, Joe. You were talking about the family unit and the family being at fault. Exactly. You see, the, the, the family unit is no longer a unit. Mm -hmm. And if a child grows up without the influence of a father, he's going to grow up hating, uh, most kids will grow up hating uh, authoritative figures. They'll hate a teacher. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll hate a school superintendent. They'll hate a policeman. You must understand. A child needs his mother and a father. That's what they need. And, they and need what about for the mothers and fathers here that are saying that they need a mother and a father? That must have hit you. The problem is, I mean, he's right. The problem is there are a lot of one-parent families in this world today. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I agree with him completely, that the parents, if you look around here, there aren't too many parents. Parents need to get more involved. Parents need to show their children that they care about them mm -hmm. and listen to them, as some of these children have said. Mm -hmm. students have said I just want to say that it's real difficult to to listen and to try and talk and try and take all this in it's real difficult for us but parents really need to let the children know that they love them and they'll listen you guys what is he telling you that they, you need your parents and we don't see a lot of parents here what is your reaction we are coming to the <clears throat> end what is your message to the parents that are out there the parents have to be more active a lot of that's what the problem is parents don't have that communication with their children what do they do how do they reach you they got to start when they're young. They got to be open and talk to their kids, say, tell me this, tell me that. A lot of parents don't do that. That's why kids mm -hmm. resort to drugs. Mm -hmm. Reflecting back on what he said about going to elementary schools, we are going to elementary school. But I prefer, as we are trying to do, because I am in a program, we are in a program now, we're trying to connect with Putnam and Commerce. We're trying to get a fair, like, uh, something kind of like a fair, to add parents. You know something, kid? Women mystify me. Yeah.